Uh, our next investment pitch this afternoon will be WYSIBOARD from Lee Angus. So thank you, Lee. Okay, great, thanks. My name is Lee Angus. I'm here to take you on an eight minute roller coaster ride of fun uh, that's all about WYSIBOARD. So, WYSIBOARD is a proprietary and patentable technology uh, developed out of Sydney, and essentially we take toys and objects and easily and very inexpensively detect them on iPad surfaces or Android devices. So I'll just show a little bit of a video if I can, please. Uh, this is actually a, a prototype of WYSIBOARD that was put up on uh, YouTube a couple of months ago. Very early stage, it's not showing you any of the gaming mechanics, but it's literally just going to give you an idea of the concept. So essentially I have a little plastic pig, just a toy, and the minute the child puts the toy down on the iPad, it knows that it's a pig and it knows where it is on the iPad, so it can localise it. So I can move it across um, and I can trigger all sorts of game mechanics and fun out of that for the child. If I swap the pig over and I put a, a cow on there, it suddenly changes the mechanics, it knows it's a cow, and then it changes the gaming environment. So racing through very quickly, so essentially we're joining where toys, um, surfaces are starting to merge. Basically, what we are answering to is an inherent problem though. These are touch screen surfaces and for children, they're fantastic to build up their digital appetite, but they do nothing for uh, fine motor skills or sensory development. So we're bringing what kids love best, toys, back into an engaging platform. So, pretty much uh, a, a very entertaining market. If we talk about the numbers very quickly, Gartner, international research firm, suggests that sales of games, hardware, software, will hit 7.4 billion by the end of this year. So gaming's big business. Mintel reports mobile phone, tablet gaming revenues in the US, that's just apps on, on tablets, is 1.6 billion by 2015. Forrester expects tablet sales will be 44 million units within the next couple of years. I, in fact, think it'll be double. If you just have a quick look at iPad growth off Apple's website, every quarter they're selling 5 million units, and they're at around 25 million units at the moment, and they haven't peaked. So it's also not just us that thinks that iPads are great for children. So the Public Broadcasting Services did a study this year of 1,000 parents with iPads, 70% of parents allowed their children to use their iPad. A minimum of eight games or an average of eight games were uh, installed on iPads for children. 90% of parents said they did so for educational value. And that's inherently what we're about, is education for children on iPads. So WYSIBOARD is literally positioning ourselves to be a leader of fully integrated edutainment apps and toys. So who am I? Um, very, very quickly, one of the co-founders. Uh, I am uh, the lead or the principal inventor on two uh, patent applications for WYSIBOARD. Uh, four years of commercialising technology out of research environments here in Australia. Um, Fifteen years of business development, international marketing roles in multinationals and startups out of Israel, Argentina and Australia. Um, studied in all sorts of things, but most importantly, I'm a qualified teacher. And I'm also a mum with three kids under eight, so I kind of watched my target market very closely. My co-founder, Nimrod Kleiman, he sits closely with me in terms of his experience. He's got four years of working with point of sale, um, doing large deployments across retailers in Australia, um, all in interactive uh, interfaces or media. And then also he has uh, five years of solid experience working with um, the world's second largest uh, plastics manufacturer, uh, Keta, which is based out of Israel. We also have a great bunch of advisors that we're calling on for some support. Hamish Hawthorne is the CEO of a, a business incubator out of Sydney. You have Alistair MacArthur, who has a great track record of um, building up and selling businesses. Tim Staley uh, from Griffith Hack. Griffith Hack is one of the largest patent attorney firms, and Tim is helping us um, with our IP positioning and our, our strategy going forward. And also Mark Paulson, who works out of Jones Day, is a partner of Jones Day in the Washington office, is also kind of helping us position. And then we're also looking for a senior advisor in the toy industry, either in the, here in Australia or in the US. So our business model is really simple. We, we drive sales of our proprietary toy sets, our own toy sets, of which here's an example of one at the moment of a group of four through an online retail channel. 
And then second to that, we also create revenues through uh, an app store. So you buy the toys, you download the app for free, and you get to play for a little while. And then you will discover there are unlockable rooms for small prices to be able to encourage the kids to kind of go into quizzes and nurseries. So great for parents because they get further utility out of their purchase. Great for us because we get a couple of bucks each time they open up a new room. And I can keep adding in new rooms around the same toy set. The other side of it is also we aren't, uh, you know, we're not greedy about this. We're about sharing the love in the sense that we're opening this platform to others as well. So other toy merchandising manufacturers are able to use the platform and we're trying to build that out at the moment um, with a view then that we clip the ticket every time they sell a toy. So great opportunity for publishers. They're all in print media. They all know they have to move to the digital space. They're all investing in e-books at the moment. And we're able to provide a really rich form of storytelling for children. Great opportunity for toy manufacturers, obviously wanting, wanting to do what we want to do, which is push more toy sales. And then great opportunity for merchandisers in the sense that you've got a couple of companies now looking at us that are in the fast food space where they can use this platform as a means of being able to extend their brand presence with the consumer. So, we're not alone though. Last month, Disney released AppMates based off their um, very popular movie Cars. So once we picked ourselves off up the floor, we had a look at the uh, technology and said, right, we do it better. So you'll notice in the picture that the person is actually holding the car in a very prescribed place. And for any of you who have three-year-olds out there, you know they don't like being told how to play. So what we do is we've created a technology that it doesn't matter where the child touches the toy, I still get a read off the app. So they can touch it off the head, they don't have to be told where to touch. And the second thing is that our technology distinguishes between the objects. So the minute you put an object down, it knows exactly what it is and it knows how to perform with that object. I replace it with another one, it knows how to perform with that. With the app mates at the moment, there's some manual configuring as far as we can tell and that's just a bit painful for parents. So our go-to-market, it's all social media, it's all online. We're doing this as cheap as chips because we're bootstrapped. Um, we'll be relying heavily on ratings, reviews as much as possible. Uh, we've got a PR person who's coming on and giving us a bit of guidance there. Um, as I mentioned, we've got an online, we've got our website set up already. We haven't actually loaded our website. We have a catchment page and we already have a thousand clicks on that page and we haven't even released or publicised a product nor have we even released a website. Plus, we've bought up all our real, real estate around Facebook and Twitter. So, revenues, without going into great detail there, uh, bottom line, top two, I, I should say the, top, the bottom two line items there are probably of most interest. Our IP position, very sure. Provisional patent application was filed in July this year, specifically around capacitive devices, and there's been a couple of years of kind of uh, lab records and inventing that goes around that. PCT patent application was filed earlier on this year around toys on interactive surfaces. Um, we've bought up all our real estate, online real estate, um, or, or, or grabbed it. We've got trademarks and obviously copyright on all our games. So WYSIBOARD is seeking investors. At the moment, we, we valued around $2 million, of which we are uh, currently in application for government grants of around $500,000. We're looking for investors to match that. Um, strategic partners in terms of refinement of our platform technology, a channel to early education. There's a super opportunity at the moment in the sense that iPads are being rolled out to cater twos all over the place. We really want to be the accessory of choice for those, um, for those devices. Introduction to the US and EU partners is really important for us. We are somewhat wilting in an Australian market and an Australian investment market. Um, licensees obviously to toy merchandisers and we're talking and advertising ourselves out there right now. We've had a few people have picked up. There's been some brokers from the US who, who are knocking on the door. Uh, game development partners, essentially we're looking for some really funky, fun games that we can apply our toys to. So that's WYSIBOARD. I welcome any advice, suggestions, thoughts or, uh, or money, basically. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Lee. Excellent. Judges, a couple of questions, please. You're going to make a million dollars or much more, because I've seen this business before and it worked last time. 
I'm sorry. This is, I really don't have a question. I just want to congratulate you. This is brilliant. I guess I, if I have to come up with a question, I mean, take a look at LeapFrog. This is LeapFrog 2.0, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if I have a question for you, it's, it's clear to me you're going to get blown away by the game manufacturers who won't respect your IP. So what are you going to do when they rip you off? Uh, okay, so we are, we're taking steps on that. So I, I, I don't know if anyone is familiar with Mark Paulson. Um, Mark sits in Washington for a very large firm, Jones Day, um, and we had coffee with Mark a couple of weeks back to say this is where we are and what we've got, um, with a view that if we were going to have a litigator on our side, it was going to be him. So he's kind of volunteered some services already. Um, and, and again, if you don't know Mark, he was kind of classed, I think, as the 2007 Washington superstar of litigation. So we're pulling in big guns if we have to. Ron. Well done. Um, I just wanted to ask, have you run it past any of the, the, the big toy brokers? As I understand, these people, there's only a few in the world, control the toy market. Yeah, so there's two majors, Hasbro and Mattel. Both of them don't deal with external inventors. They go through brokers. We're talking to eight different brokers of which Hasbro has referred us to, and that was through the managing director in Australia, of which I sent a direct email to him. Um, we, we've got some connections into Mattel, but they're not very tight. Um, and then we're going through various channels to try and get to them. But essentially, it's all through the broker network. But I, I think with Hasbro and Mattel, they're probably not going to look at us. We're too little, you know, we're not interesting enough for them. They are an exit plan down the track. We're going for kind of middle um, tier two toy manufacturers, build up a lot of volume, get the platform out there everywhere we can, and then we become really, really attractive for the Mattels and Hasbro's later, just because of the volumes and the control. Excellent. Thanks very much, Lee, for your presentation. Thank you.